Maybe I get out of bed. <laughs> right. Oh. Kick off the covers. Breathe. Right. Ever faced with the, with a, a procrastinating buyer and seller and you want to say, look, this is what I think you should do. Use phrase 14, which according to Phil Jones of exactly what to say, says, these two words, which contain just 10 letters, are possibly responsible for more of my negotiating success than any other single strategy I have employed in my business. There are two types of realtors in this world, those that do the minimal and get marginal results, and those that hone their skills and masterminds like this. Um, welcome to our Monday Mastermind, and we are gonna incorporate prayer, fun, and a little bit of scripture to really get the week going and have some breakthroughs, I stand on this Bible premise for the group, which is Mark 11, 24. Jesus said, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it and it will be yours. Believe. Can someone open us up in prayer? Winner, yes. winner, chicken dinner. Hallelujah, glory, 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 glory to your name. What an amazing God you are, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the eternal self-existing one. Thank you, Lord, that you have made yourself known to each of us. Thank you that you've uh, come into us and you give us guidance. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this time we have to gather together to uh, seek you and to learn more about our business. We pray that your spirit would guide this meeting, and that we would all know you better through this experience. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Let's get a little shot in the arm with some Ogmandino, greatest salesman in the world, because that's what you are. Chapter 13, scroll mark six, seven times. Ogmandino says, today... I will be master of my emotions. Summer wanes and the cold increases. All nature is a circle of moods and I am part of nature. So like the tides, my moods will rise and my moods will fall. I awaken with moods. Inside me is a wheel constantly turning from sadness to joy, from exaltation to depression, from happiness to melancholy. Let it be. Yet I will remember as, that as today's dead flower carries the seed of tomorrow's bloom, so too does today's sadness carry the seed of tomorrow's joy. And how, how will we master these emotions so that each day will be productive? So that every day is happy, we will learn the secret of the ages. Weak is he who permits his thoughts to control his actions. Strong is he who forces his actions to control his thoughts. I will follow this plan of battle before I am captured by the forces of sadness, self-pity, and failure. Depressed, sing. Sad, laugh. Ill, double your labor. Fear, plunge ahead. Inferior, wear new garments. Uncertain, raise your voice. Poverty, think of wealth. Incompetent, remember success. Insignificant, remember your goals. I must never relinquish control. Overconfident, recall my failures. Overindulge, past hungers. Complacency, remember competition. Like you're saying, Kimberly, the, the, the person who makes more money can be your incentive. Every moment of greatness, moments of shame, all powerful, great wealth, overly proud. Today, be the master of your emotions. I will also understand and recognize the moods of him on whom I call. Make allowances for their anger, irritation. No longer will I fail to call again tomorrow on he who meets me with hate today. Tomorrow he would exchange his home for money. It actually says a tree, but for money. My knowledge of this secret will be my key to great wealth. Recognize and identify the mastery of moods. Master my moods through positive action. When I master my moods, I will control my destiny. I'll become master of myself. I will become great. Us women, I don't know. I feel like our emotions can really get the best of us sometimes. And I was reading in some of this material that we got from Clemmer, and it talked about if you have, if you're having an emotional thing going on, change your actions. And that's kind of what he was saying there too. And I tried it and it actually worked. I was kind of in this pity party and I just like jumped up and I did something totally different, took on a different action. And suddenly that mood was gone. Does anybody do little tweaks like that? Music often. Upbeat. Music. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of the studies that I do, I mean, that, there's a, a really good exercise to just, whenever there's, whenever you're in kind of the fun, you start focusing on what you do want and not what you don't want and um, just get it out of your head completely. And uh, that alone can actually shift everything as well. The magic words for influence and, and impact. That's what exactly what to say is about. Phil Jones, he's trained more than 2 million people across five continents and over 50 countries in the lost art of spoken communication. How did your practice from last week's study go? Number 12, which was if then. Here's the scenario. 
you're with your client and you want them to believe the outcome. This is gonna close. <laughs> Kimberly used a good example. If you offer a buyer compensation, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, then you will attract financially qualified buyers presenting quality offers in relation to the NAR settlement. If you list with me, I can guarantee you won't be sorry. Anybody else try any of those? Okay. The example he gave was, as kids, we heard, if you, if you don't clean your room, then no dinner for you. Ah. I did have a listing that um, she wanted to negotiate because I said, you know, it is always negotiable. <laughs> so I did say, if, you know, basically, yeah, if you want less, which of these items would you like me to remove that I do for you? <laughs> you know, so if we're offering less, then, you know, there goes paying for professional photography and me coming in and staging, you know, so if you offer less, then I do less. <laughs> But, I like it. Yeah, perfect. You know, good example. So I guess I did. Okay. When you tell people what most people would do, their subconscious brain says, "Aha! I am most people." And so, if that is what most people would do, then perhaps that is what I should do. No one wants to be shoulded on. Have you ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Shoulded on. Who likes to be told what they should do? I certainly don't. When I hear, Kate, you should do this or that, and it's coming from someone I haven't asked advice from, nor have I brought them into my inner circle of accountability besties, I feel like my boundaries are being busted. It wasn't too long ago that I personally made a commitment to quit using the word should with people. It's a tough one. As Phil mentions, it's kind of rude and obnoxious to tell someone what they should do, but instead, if you simply state what most people would do in this situation, see how it would change things. Phrase 14, most people. Remember that commercial for Life Cereal? <laughs> Two boys are a little apprehensive about trying some new cereal. And hey, Mikey, he likes it. Get Mikey to try. If he eats it, then we'll eat it. And same with, let's say you're out cliff diving at Moab, Utah, and you're standing on the edge of the cliff. And who who's going first? Okay, when that person goes, oh, then I can go. And Following others, you trust that there's safety in numbers. People take confidence from the fact that people have made a decision before and that that decision worked out just fine. Talking about the power of words and how our Lord and Savior would handle words, most people takes on a pretty good meaning here. I found a quote from Vance Havner, and who is this guy? He was, uh, he was born of a humble beginning in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. 1901 to 1986 is when this guy lived. He was called to preach, licensed at 12, ordained at 15, and preached all over America. Havner became one of the best loved and renowned revivalists of the 20th century. This is one of his quotes. Most people would not want to live where there are no churches, but many people live as though there were no churches. This quote from the Bible, which is a Bible verse, Matthew 7, 13 through 14, says, Go in through the narrow door. The door is wide and the road is easy that leads to hell or a place where there is no connection with God. And, but the door is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life that lasts forever. Few people are finding it. So many or most people are going through that door that leads to hell. I just wanted to challenge us this week. Let's not give up praying for and searching for the lost as we go about our week. Can we invite one person to church this week with us? I would like to see that most people actually make it into heaven. So let's do that. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Get into coaching or align yourself with organizations that celebrate you and who want to help you grow into a better real estate professional. There's a place where you can go. Just Google EXP World Holdings. EXP is a company that is owned by every agent. As soon as you have your first deal, you get stock in the company and you are an owner. Here's a quote from Kent Chang, the chief accounting officer of eXp World Holdings. He said, in Q2, we delivered a solid second quarter as eXp agents closed $52 billion in transactions, a 7% year-over-year increase, and grew revenues 5% year-over-year while generating significant cash flow and returning $56 million to us, the shareholders, through share repurchases and cash dividends. Woo! That's why, that's one of the reasons why I joined eXp. And maybe there's a reason for you in that too. Talk with somebody who invited you to this and they will share with you all the beauty that is eXp. Exercise 14. Try to argue with each of these points and see how much they can be used to strengthen your point of view. I just kind of made these up. What most people do, 
is they go through the contract line by line with me here today. Then they receive an email with the electronic signatures and we get your property listed. What most people in your circumstances do is snag this property quickly, knowing there'll be a lot of offers coming in fast. How do you like those? What most people do is go through the contract line by line with me here today. And then they get an email with electronic signatures and we get your property listed. Doable? Yeah, good. Okay. All right. That concludes our mastermind for today. Two words that will move your listener to take action. Don't worry if you're wondering how you're going to make all these new phrases stick. They'll come in time and you will have mastered it after getting a little better from one conversation to the next. Most people put the words most people into some of their daily conversations and most of those people see an immediate positive effect on their influence. Come back 13 more times as we unpack exactly what to say as it relates to increasing real estate sales and brokerages and combining Jesus as our example of using words that matter. Here's Ephesians 4.29. Do not let any unwholesome words come out of your mouth, except for those that are building others up according to their needs and that it would benefit those who listen. If you are prepared to give a few of these phrases a try, then I'm certain you'll see results quickly. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, in terms of incorporating this, I think you talked about it last week, Kate, uh, where you have a three by five card or, or just a piece of paper with all of, the, uh, uh, all of these words written down and so you can actually start practicing them. And I think that's a great idea. That's, you know, just... Because obviously every week we read the chapter, uh, so we might as well have something that we can look at on a regular basis to really start incorporating it um, into our businesses. Right. <clears throat> and when I know that I'm making my calls, I grab this card and I set it right next to me. And as I'm talking to the person, I'll just say, well, I'm not sure if it's for you, but and I just throw them out there and it comes off the tongue rather easily. And I feel more confident in what I'm saying. I feel like I'm just a few words in general. I'm more of a listener than I am a talker, although you probably don't think that because I'm doing this, but truly I, I am. <laughs> I like listening more than talking. Um, and so I need to have these things ready to use. Good point. All right, so we had prayer requests.